Okay, I'm going to share another story with you. This is how love covers a multitude of sin. Pat Love back from Love Healing Hearts, part three, on this love and humility thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a friend, very close friend, the one God used to usher me into the kingdom of God. Her name is Pastor Gladys Jackson, and I'm proud to say her name, and I know she would allow me to use her whole name. Pastor Gladys Jackson was my neighbor. She had a neighbor who lived two doors down from her on the right, or one maybe right next door. Now, now we're going to pull the race card. This is not about race. This is about love, and this is what I want you to hear. One thing that you and I both know, you do not call a black person nigger and think you're going to walk away and it's okay. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have something to tangle with. You know that. This woman was the, the minister of, evangelist, of evangelism in our church. She has such a heart to reach out and pull people into the kingdom, including me. And she was reaching out to this family on her right. I, I lived on her left. This family lived on her right. Now, this family was a white family with a father, a mother. They were alcoholics with two little girls. And their life was a life of clutter and confusion. So you know there was a lot of damage done in the midst of all the drinking and the confusion and the fighting and everything. Well, what, what Pastor Jackson would do is go next door. If the woman needed a ride to the store, she would help her. If they needed prayer, she would pray for them. But that wouldn't be where it ends. She did what Jesus did. She washed their feet. And this is how she washed their feet. Black Pastor Gladys Jackson would go in this white family's home that was nothing but clutter everywhere you looked and would wash their dishes and clean their house just for the sake of Jesus Christ alone. And one day the woman got angry at her because Gladys was trying to help her and she didn't want to hear the words of correction coming out of her mouth. So she got angry like many of us do when somebody steps on our toes with real truth. But what this woman did was something you don't do. She called Gladys a nigger. I'm making an example. Listen to what I'm saying. Gladys said, you better thank God for Jesus Christ. And she walked out the house and just said, okay, I'm going to wait till I calm down. The Lord gets me back in line. And then she went back and they had a peace offering conversation that was reconciled, you know, where the lady apologized and it was all over and it was done. And Gladys continued to minister to that family. That's love. That's humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God so he can exalt you in due time. That's placing others before yourself. That's washing someone's feet. That is leading by example. Now, I say all that to say, how far are you willing to go? What are you willing to deal with in order to show the hardest people, some of the hardest people out there that you know? Doesn't matter what race or age or lifestyle or anything, but there are some very difficult people out there who are very damaged and they don't know how to communicate intelligibly. They don't know how to 
how to get a point across without cussing somebody out. They haven't been taught communication skills to actually articulate what they're feeling. Half the time they don't even know what they're feeling. So all they know how to do with that is lash out. What are you willing to deal with? With difficult issues like that. To stick with a person until you win them to Christ or until God ends your assignment with them. What are you willing to deal with? What are you willing to give? What are you willing to serve with? How far are you willing to go with them? Hurting people hurt people. But when you are operating in the love of Jesus, the love of God, God will open your eyes to their pain, not to the stuff they do that you hate, <coughs> but the pain, the, the turmoil that's lodged in them that they don't know how to navigate through. So they make a messy situation messier. They make a worse situation worse. It just gets worse and worse. And they go down a spiral. And sometimes you are the only lifeline that can save them from themselves. How far are you willing to go? Or would you rather let them handle that and someone else do the other while you sit on your chair of magnificence and pontificate your importance, your positions, your titles. And we go, have church, uh, 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 uh. oh Jesus, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jesus ain't nowhere in it. Because there's no love in it. You're just sitting there glorifying yourself in the name of Jesus. Who are you glorifying? Who are you willing to glorify? What are you willing to give up? What rights of your own are you willing to give up? You might have a right to kick somebody's tail in the human, in the natural. But Jesus... His requirement is forgiveness. Whether they apologize or not, forgive. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking real life stuff here. I'm not talking about something that happened in the here by and by, little fairy tales and, and myths and all of that. But no, I'm dealing with real life. Because that's where the people are. That's what Jesus deals with. Not a parade of ego, but people's hearts, people's needs, those deepest needs. Where are you willing to go to reach those needs, to meet those needs? Only you can answer that.